Hi everyone, it's T.I. from Snowflake Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how to do this crochet fair aisle design. This is for size 0 to 3 months. If you'd like to learn how to make this cute little hat, just keep watching. Hi guys, so as promised, I told you I was going to do a newborn hat tutorial. So here it is. It's going to be um, using that fair aisle kind of knit look. Um, stitch. We're going to use the waistcoat stitch for this pattern or the center single crochet stitch. Um, what you're going to need for this pattern is a 8mm crochet hook. You're also going to need a tapestry needle to weave in the ends and finish off the hat. And you're going to need two chunky yarn. Um, Two different colors obviously this this um yarn is the lion's print sorry lion's pride wool spun yarn um i normally use that yarn in my chunky tutorials i don't um, remember what color this is as usual but um, i think this is the lightest pink that they do have so i'm going to be using that and i i believe this is loops and thread in white I'm almost positive it is, and this is going to be my accent color for the pattern. So we're going to start off by chaining 34. Okay, let me get my end, it took me forever to find the end of the yarn. Okay, so we're going to start by um, doing our slip knot. I've done this a bunch of times, so just gonna go through it really quickly. There's, um, I think my Bowie beanie tutorial goes into detail of how to do the slip knot. So we're gonna start with the slip knot. So after you do your slip knot, you're going to chain. What should we chain? We're gonna chain 34. So one, two, three. Four. This one is messed up. Now that we have our um, chain, we're going to join the two ends making sure that our work is not twisted. Okay, so now we're going to join our work. I'm going to take the end that has the tail and that you just finished your last chain in. We're going to take that the hook, insert it to that opposite end. We're gonna take the end that's attached to the ball of yarn yarn over and pull it through both loops okay and then we're going to twist that and have our work facing us and we're going to do 34 single crochets in each of those chains okay so let me do that and then i'm gonna come right back okay so after you've created your 34 um, single crochets. Now we're going to start doing um, the waistcoat stitch. And we're going to start in that first single crochet that we did. So we're going to insert it in the middle of the V's. Um, I have another video that I'm going to link below that um, will explain to you how to do the waistcoat, waistcoat stitch. Okay, so let's insert it into that first single crochet and then we're going to put a stitch marker here because we're going to be working in the round and without the stitch marker, we will not know where we started. So that's one. I'm gonna go in again, two, 
three, four, five, six. That's just like the wind outside. It's snowing out. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm gonna go around and then we're gonna meet back right before the stitch marker. Okay, so I'm at the last stitch before I start the sec. Well, this is the third round that we're gonna be doing next. So this is 34. So we're gonna start our third round. I'm gonna remove the stitch marker. I'm gonna do waistcoat stitch. And we're going to put our stitch marker back. And we're going to continue until we get back to our stitch marker. Okay, so we're back at um, the beginning of the third round. And right here is where we're going to start using our accent color. So we're going to remove that stitch marker. And then we're going to um, add in that accent color by inserting our hook into um, that first single crochet. But of course, you know, like not the top portion, but in between the stitch. Let me see if you can see it here. So this is the normal single crochet and you'll see like these two sides that kind of look like a V. We're going in here in between that. Okay. So let's go into that and we're going to take the end of our accent color and we're gonna leave like a six inch tail still because we're gonna have to weave in that end. And we're going to just make like a loop, put it on our hook, and then we're going to pull that through. And then we're going to yarn over with our main color. Okay. And then you'll see from that, we have like a little heart shape V, which is my favorite part of like knitting. Okay, and we're going to do the next one with our main color. We're gonna insert, pull through the main color, yarn over, pull through both loops. For the next one, we're going to take our accent color that we're going to be carrying from the back. We're going to put that on the hook, make sure we're not pulling it too tight because when you pull it too tight, your hat will become smaller than you intend it to be. So make sure you're kind of loose with carrying this yarn. You're gonna pull it through. You're gonna have the white on the left hand side, the pink on the right side, and you're gonna yarn over with the pink, okay? And then just give it a little tug and you can see now like we're alternating between the whites and the pink. And you're gonna continue doing that. Um, did I put by my stitch marker? No, see? We're gonna put, started the row with the white. It's a good thing we're using contrasting color this round. I think we're gonna put it in here. Okay, <laughs> almost forgot. You can't forget, because then you're gonna forget where you started. It's a little bit easier since we had started with that contrasting color, but if we we're still going in the pink, it would have been completely lost. So let's go in with the pink again. Pull through, pull through both, and then let's pick up the white. Yarn over with the pink. Go through with the pink. Pull through the pink, yarn over with the pink. Go through with the pink, but pull up the white. Pull that through and then yarn over with the pink. 
And then we're gonna meet back up at our stitch marker. Okay, so now we're back at our stitch marker. And our last one before we end the round is going to be just the regular pink, okay? Okay, so for the start of the, what is this? This is the fifth round. It's just going to be a round of pink, but you're going to yarn over with the white. And you'll see why, because the next round after that, it's going to be all white and it just transitions better when you have that top portion already, oh, sorry, already white. You'll see what I mean. Remove our stitch marker. We're going to go in with the pink, pull up a pink, but yarn over with the white. And that first one will be pink, but don't worry about that. Insert, pull up the pink, yarn over with the white. Insert, pull up the pink, yarn over with the white. I'm gonna continue doing that for the rest of the fifth round. Insert, pull up the pink, yarn over with the white. And I'll meet you back at the stitch marker. Okay, so we just completed our fifth row with the pinks, but we yarned over with the white yarn. As you can see, the top edge in will be white. For the sixth row now, let's remove the stitch marker. It's just going to be all white. And I'm going to show you why I did what I did. Um, yarning over with that white instead of yarning over with the pink. Let's finish the sixth row and I'll show you the difference. Because I have a hat here that I yarned over with the pink. Well, not specifically the pink, but yarn over with the same color instead of the accent color and I'm going to show you how that turned out. Okay, so now we're going to start the sixth row, which is supposed to be all white. And we're going to yarn over with the pink. Okay, so start the row white yarn over with the pink and a place back our stitch marker insert sorry my phone <laughs> pull up the white yarn over with the pink okay Insert, pull up the white, yarn over with the pink, and we're going to continue doing that for the rest of the row until we get back to our stitch marker. Okay, so now that I finished that round, I could show you now why I changed my yarn overs. And it could be that I'm just anal or whatever, but do you see that? Like, you can't even tell that this is crocheted. And it's all because of the yarn over. Because if in this round, in the previous round, if I had yarned over with the pink, you'd have like a pink backdrop between these whites. But because I yarned over with the white, the backdrop is white. So you can't even tell. Like that's... Ugh. Okay, and this is how I realized that from my mistake. Like, look at this. Let me see if I can focus. You see how in this round, I decided to yarn over with the cream, 
but I was doing a gray next. So if I yarned over with a gray, you would not see this line of cream but because I yarn over with a cream now this gray has this obvious cream backsplash which that looks messed up so figure it out and you have to yarn over with let me see how to explain this the next color that you're going to work with make sure that in the previous round you're yarning over with that color See? Okay. Alrighty. The seventh round, we're going to do all pink. And for the eighth round, we're going to alternate between the white and pink. And in that round, we're going to also yarn over with the pink. Okay, so I just finished my seventh round of all pink. And now I'm going to be doing my eighth round of alternating between the white and the pink. And I'm going to start with the white. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook, pick up that white, and uh, make sure you're not pulling anything too tight. I'm going to yarn over with the pink, and I'm going to place back the stitch marker. Okay, insert, now pull up the pink, yarn over with the pink, insert, pull up the white, yarn over with the white, and we're going to continue doing that, I mean, sorry, yarn over with the pink, and we're going to continue doing that for the rest of the round, alternating between the white and pink, and yarning over with the pink. Okay, so for round 9, 10, and 11. So for three rounds, we're just going to be doing all pink. Okay, so let me remove the stitch marker. Go in the pink. We're going to also yarn over with the pink. Okay. So all pink. For the next three rounds, also yarning over with the pink, okay? And I'll see you back at round 12. Okay, so for our 12th round, we're going to alternate between the pinks and the whites. We're going to start alternating with the white. And remove the stitch marker, insert. Let me put my yarn back here. I'm gonna pull through the white, yarn over with the pink. Pull through the pink, yarn over with the pink. Pull through the white, yarn over with the pink. Okay, and we're going to keep doing that for the entire round, and then I'll meet you back for round 13. I forgot to put my stitch marker in at the start of that round, but I knew I started with the white, so it's okay, but try not to forget. Okay. Last one is the pink, first one is the white. So for this next round, um, which is round 13, we're going to be doing all pink, but we're going to yarn over with the white. Okay, so we're gonna insert the pink, pull up the pink, yarn over with the white. Okay, and I'm gonna not forget to put my stitch marker. Okay. So insert the white. Pull up. Sorry. The white. Pull up the pink. 
pink yarn over with the white insert pull up the pink yarn over with the white and you can see I'm holding both um, yarns with one hand and I'm just kind of using my hook to direct which one I want to grab so insert pull grab the pink and then grab the white pull grab the pink grab the white grab the pink and I found like that's the most like efficient way for me to change colors and it goes the fastest grab oops insert grab the pink and grab the white insert grab the pink and grab the white insert pink and white and then I'm gonna meet you back at our stitch marker okay so we've just now completed row 13 so for row 14 to move the stitch marker it's going to be all white but you're going to yarn over with the pink so you're going to insert pull the white sorry insert pull the white yarn over with the pink i'm going to put our stitch marker on that So insert, grab the white, sorry, insert, grab the white, yarn over with the pink. Insert, grab the white, yarn over with the pink. I'm going to continue doing that for the rest of that row. And then we're going to meet up at row 15. Okay, so for row 15, it's just going to be all pink and we're also going to yarn over with our pink. Let's insert pink, pink. So for round 15, just going to do all All pink. Okay. And then we're going to meet up at row 16. Okay. Okay. And this is our progress so far. So we're up to row 16 now. And for that row, we're going to alternate between the white and the pink or our main color and our accent color. And we're going to yarn over with that pink, okay? But the first one is going to be the white. Where's that white? I'm gonna grab the white, yarn over with the pink. Okay. Grab the white, yarn over with the pink. Grab the white, yarn over with the pink. The white. Oops, no. <laughs> I got so excited. Sorry. Go back. So, after we did the white, we're supposed to be doing pink. Here's the pink. I'm gonna grab the white. Sorry. Grab the white. Yarn over with the pink. And get that ball out the way. Get this in focus. So we're gonna go in. Get the pink. Yarn over with the pink. Go in, get the white. Yarn over with the pink. Go in and get the pink, yarn over with the pink, go in and get the white, yarn over.
and over with the white. I mean, sorry, with the pink. And you're going to continue doing that until you reach the end of your row. And I forgot to put in my stitch marker again. Let's put that in. And I'll meet you back for row 17. So, we just finished round 16. So, for round 17, 18, 19, and 20, we're just going to go around with the pink. Okay, please make sure you put back your stitch marker because there'll be no new color to show you where you started, which will kind of make it easier to retrace. So we're gonna go around for one for four rounds with just your pink. And when you reach round 20, um, we'll meet back up. For the last row, um, not for the last row, for the last stitch to kind of end it, we're going to insert our hook. I'm gonna pull through that pink and pull it through the loop. It's gonna create a loop. I'm gonna put this loop through it. I don't know, I think I did that too fast, hold on. Let me rewind and do that a little slower. This was the last one before. Okay, so this was the first um, stitch to start the 20th row. We're gonna insert our hook into that. Gonna pull through the pink. So now we have two pinks on our hook and we're gonna take that same pink that we just pulled through and pull it through that first. Then we're gonna take the end that's attached to the ball and we're going to just put that through this loop. I'm gonna tighten that. And then we're going to cut. Yep. So cut. So now that won't go anywhere. And normally I will now um, turn my work inside out and weave in all my ends but I'm sure you guys know how to do that. What I really want to show you how to do is um, how I close up the hat. Okay, and let me also cut the white, give it like a six inch tail. Let me put that away. Let me grab my handy dandy peppermint holder case me that I got for my tea. It pays to drink tea, guys. Okay. My hooks, put that aside. And when I, um, I put my stitch marker back in. And when I um, close my hat, I normally turn my work inside out when I'm doing that. Okay, so here's the top. And my yarn through and we're just gonna weave in and out and up and down through the top portion of her last row of waistcoat stitch in and out in and out in and out in and out In and out, in and out. And the reason why I close it like this is because I hate, hate decreasing, increasing. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, okay. So I got back to the front. And then I'll make sure that the middle part, like the hat, is in half right now where this first row that we started with is like centered in the middle 
and then when I pull the string I kind of like shape it as well like I make sure like the front part is like flat and then I'll pull it so like I'll shape it while I'm doing it so that gets like the best result and then I'll push my needle from the back go through just to close up that little tiny hole that's still there pull that really tight and go back the other way pull that really tight and I'm gonna do this for another maybe two three times and sometimes I'll have that loop and then I'll just put my needle to that loop to give that extra security okay the last thing I want is for like the top of the hat to pop open okay that's the last one no. see I get really scared I gonna do one more just <laughs> just to be extra certain just one more and it doesn't hurt to like put your finger through here and kind of see like if there's any space that you're missing that you cannot see okay and last one so I did that like eight times just to be sure and then we're gonna turn this back around. And there you go. Look at that, baby. Look at that. Okay. And then another thing I wanted to show you is this portion. Sorry. This portion. When you weave this, um, this end that you started with, when you weave this in, um, just kind of put it in on the inside and then weave it in. Looks better that way. But yeah, you could turn your hat back inside out and weave in your ends. But that's the end of the tutorial.